Okay guys, so it's been a hot minute since I've done a wet sewing video. I wanted to go ahead and showcase some of the sales I've made recently and just give a breakdown on how I came across the stuff, you know, if there's anything cool about it. So first off, these are some Wizard of Oz hardcover books. Um, basically, this is the first three Wizard of Oz books. Most people don't realize there's actually like, I don't know, 20 something different Wizard of Oz books. They used to make, the writer used to write a new one every year and release them around Christmas. So it was a big tradition for every year for Christmas to get your kids the newest Wizard of Oz book. But anyway, this is um, three uh, anniversary edition hardcovers. Found this at an estate sale. It wasn't, it was just a random estate sale I just came across. Wasn't looking for it. There really wasn't much to look, to, there wasn't really much for me. It was mostly a lot of glassware and just like clothes and stuff I just have no interest in trying to sell. But I saw these books and you know, the person was offering a dollar a piece, so I took them. Was a pretty, I knew that these, I knew that Wizard Oz books can do well, especially these big, nice hardcover editions. So I went ahead and get got them. Also, by the way, these first few sales are on Macardia. So this was an anime DVD. Uh, I paid one dollar for this at a Goodwill. I was visiting a town uh, that I don't normally go to, pretty far out, and just went to their Goodwill. And this was there. Um, I don't usually mess with DVDs too much, but I knew that. I recognized the name that this was a pretty little known live action movie. Didn't realize they had an anime version of it. So I figured, you know, I know the live action one's got a big cult following and it's kind of rare. So I figured I'd get this and for a dollar I was like, I'll gamble. And then ended up selling it for 10 bucks. Uh, wasn't a bad deal. Uh, next up we have this Warhammer 40k uh, codex book. Uh, so my local game store, hobby store, they're always, he's always putting uh, different game manuals for like, RPGs or well, miniature games are in clearance, so I'm always going through them because uh, you know it's just we don't have we don't have a big community for people to play these games, so he's always trying to push those things out. And you know sometimes they can do really well. I've done very well reselling books that I find there for a dollar, two dollars. You know different game books for different little known RPGs or whatever. Uh, this one wasn't the best the best flip. I mean I think I paid a dollar for it, so it was okay, but nothing nothing crazy. Okay, so this one was really interesting. Uh, so, at my girlfriend's work, they had this uh, fundraiser garage sale thing that people had just donated stuff to them for the last couple of years and they were just selling the stuff. After it was all said and done, there was still stuff left over they were just kind of getting rid of. And my girlfriend brought home a big stack of these and she was under the impression that I would, I would use them as void fill because she knows I use void fill a lot. So she'd always bring me like random magazine scraps, you know, different kinds of paper and void fill. Uh, so, but I ended up looking at these and I was like, you know what, these are still sealed and I, they're kind of old and not old, but I think they're, I think they're out of print. So I was like, I'll take a gamble. I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can get for them. I've, I've actually sold probably like five different lots of these so far for about between 15 to $10 plus shipping. So they've done very well for me. Um, they're, you know, I usually put them in like stacks of five or six and I try to put the same types of, it's, they're usually, these are gift wraps packets. I try to put the same design on each lot. This was a lot of Spongebob ones that sold very quickly. So for something I have absolutely nothing invested in that was great. And I don't know about you guys but since I, since people since people since my friends and family know that at resale they're always giving me just random stuff for free and so it's actually pretty nice. It's pretty much like here's some extra junk that we have no room for take it. And I really appreciate that. I don't I just want to know in the comments that do you guys get friends and family give you stuff that don't want you to sell it on their behalf or give them payment do you do you guys get that a lot this is another example of just a free item that i got my grandparents uh had oh, my grandma passed a while back so they that they've been cleaning out the estate and uh there was just a big box of random you know remotes and different little electronics that you know were just not very desirable for anybody around the area so they, I, I took them and i've been selling them little by little the, these remotes do pretty well. There's always somebody that's trying to get one for an old TV or something they have, and I can't really test them, so they're untested. But you know, I sell them cheap enough that it doesn't really matter. Next up is an item that I have sold many times. I've actually, at one time, I had about probably like a 20 quantity listing of this item that I've sold all out of. Uh, basically, just it's like a random lot of 10 different pre recorded VHS tapes. That basically just means it's VHS tapes that somebody re recorded something off the TV with. 
and I just line them up in groups of 10. Don't, you know, the person, the customer doesn't know what's going to be on them. I don't know what's going to be on them. Just kind of a gift bag thing. Um, I usually sell these for anywhere between 15 to $20, usually with shipping sometimes, like in this case, without shipping. Um, they usually move pretty quick, and I've had a pretty good success rate with these. I mean, I almost pay nothing for these at state sales. I usually just get a giant bag or a box, and I usually pay maybe five, ten bucks for the whole box. So, pretty good. I've kind of dried out on them because there hasn't been, you know, state sales lately as much, but definitely a good buy. Next up is uh, two uh, vintage Star Trek VHS tapes. So I found these at a local Kark. It's a thrift store we have, and these were pretty. These are priced pretty high. That first store, for some reason, prices their VHS is way higher than any other store I've ever seen. They charge almost two dollars a VHS tape, which is ridiculous, you know, usually. But these, I knew they'd probably be worth it, so I took a gamble and bought a bunch. I think I paid like twenty bucks for, a, I don't know, probably like fifteen, twenty tapes. I don't know, something like that. Um, and I've actually, I've already sold two or three different lots of these tapes for like between ten to twenty dollars. So. They're definitely doing good. Like, it definitely wasn't a bad buy. I just wish I could have got them for the normal good little $1 piece or even the garage sale, 25 cents. You know, normally you want to be buying VHS tips for 25 cents or, you know, 50 cents or less. But at a Goodwill, I will pay a dollar because it is a retail store and all that. But, yeah, $2 is way too much. And most of, almost 90% of the time. So I'm sure most of the reseller savvy people out there are watching this. And, you know, remember that just a few months ago when we had the big quarantine... Uh, you know, well, which we still do, but you know, at the very beginning of it, puzzles were just so inflated. You could like go into a Walmart or something, buy puzzles, and just resell them on eBay for like 20 more dollars than what you paid for them, and you could flip them all day long. People were doing this like insanely. Um, I caught on to it a little late in the game, you know, and I happened to work at a, a grocery store. It's kind of a sucky grocery store for puzzles. We had like maybe three different puzzles, so I ended up buying the ones we had. And I did really good with some of them. This was like the, the the oddball one that was left over that didn't sell. I kept lowering it, lowering it. Finally, someone bought it for five dollars plus shipping, and it went it went through the global shipping program, so it's not you know somebody different country. Um, in the end, I think I might have I pretty much paid what I put into it, so I didn't really. I just cut even basically, but I already made money on the other puzzles, so. At least I was able to flip this for what I paid for it and not like lose out because I mean the puzzle thing was a huge risk you know it was just like jumping on the bandwagon for a week you know. So a while, a while back probably close to six months ago I was at a um, flea market in Texas and one of the booths had a whole bunch of uh had like a nice stack of these Star Trek uh, audio tapes you know kind of like basically audio books essentially on cassette tapes. And I ended up buying like a bunch of them for I think maybe four bucks all together, five bucks. And I've been selling them little by little. You know, I sell maybe one every few months. You know, it's just been sprinkling. I still got plenty of them, but I've definitely made my money back so far. This was actually a really good flip. So I was just recently at a state sale, I think last weekend, and um, they had a bunch of books and movies and stuff, like a whole shelf of media essentially, and everything on that shelf was fifty cents a piece. So I ended up buying a ton of stuff. I should, I think I paid 40 bucks all together at the estate sale um, for a whole bunch of books with and also a bunch of tools and stuff. And I've sold a couple of other items for decent money so far. And this actually, this one item that I paid 50 cents for at the estate sale pretty much got me, back, got me over half of what I paid for back. So it's definitely going to be, a, I think by the time it's all said and done, that estate sale is going to be a very good estate sale. Um, but anyway, this is a box set of the Magic School Buzz cartoon uh, DVDs uh, and the, I ended up selling these very very quickly actually these sold within less than an hour I think I had it originally for 30 with for 30 with free shipping and then someone gave me an offer and I just took the offer because you know like I didn't really care it was I just wanted to get the item done you know but this was definitely a surprising item to me I did not think this would move for this much money but you know Okay, so next up, this was an item that I picked up at this little, um, I don't know, we were, I don't know if it's called, really, I don't know if it's technically called a thrift store or what. It's basically just this little rinky dink little store with this lady that she buys, she buys out garage sales and estate sales and storage lockers and stuff like that. And just has a little shop where she sells stuff, a lot of furniture and stuff. But everyone, I go in there every once in a while and check through stuff. You know, she knows I'm a reseller. I'm, I'm a very upfront and honest about that. And she don't care as long as she she gets what she paid for it you know like what she wants out of it it's fine you know it's a good relationship so anyway 
this was in her split her display case for like four bucks so I bought it for four bucks ended up flipping it for 13 with free shipping so not a great flip but still uh, but still a very positive flip and it moved very quickly I think I had this for less than a day and it was a very small item so it didn't take up much room it didn't cost hardly anything to ship it's a vintage uh, Campbell lighter uh, lighter pouch for your lighters or zippos or whatever okay so this uh, I'm a suck I'm always a sucker for really old unique books you know just like just cool little non-fiction interesting books uh they're like for weird interest I, i'm always a sucker for these uh even if i even if i don't even know if there's a market for it i just pick them up half the time so i found this at some thrift store i think i paid 25 cents for it picked it up took a while to sell but i ended up selling it to uh somebody in australia surprisingly enough it was an inter it was an international sale it was actually to a soldier i'm guessing because the address was a military base uh, and it was my first time ever sending something to a mil to an American military base in another country, so that was kind of weird. They had a special form you had to like, a special label you had to print off eBay. So that was kind of an uh, interesting experience. Next up, we have some Monopoly money from a Pokemon Monopoly game that I I uh, sold. I didn't make much on this, but you know, I'll, what I do a lot of times, I'll buy these like when I'm at garage sales or whatever. They always have board games, but they're always open, so you never know if all the pieces are there. You know, I'm never, I'm not usually educated enough to look at the box and can tell if they're all there. So, I mean, so most people will pass on these, but I will buy them. If they're like two or three dollars, I will buy them because I can, I'll break them up into pieces. And normally with Monopoly, I break them up. I sell the, the money by itself. I sell the game pieces by itself. I'll sell the, uh, like the, the player pieces by themselves. I will usually also sell the property pieces by themselves and then the game board by itself. And you know, sometimes you, you sit on these for a while, but they usually do just kind of move randomly piece by piece. I usually market them as replacement parts, and they, you know, they do sell. Um, the, you know, the, the, the money and the, the game pieces or whatever, or like the, the, the property pieces and the cards, they normally don't sell for very much, like maybe five bucks or so usually. But the game board usually sells for, depending on what the game it is, what, what edition, it usually sells for like eight to ten bucks. And then the game pieces, like the player pieces, those can sometimes sell for decent money, especially if it's a rare special edition Monopoly, like the Star Wars one, those game pieces are really cool, they're almost like really cool figures, so you can get more for those. Next we have this large bulk of Yu-Gi-Oh cards, it's basically just 1,000 unsorted common cards, uh, mixtures of different types, traps, monsters, magic cards, they're all mixed in. Um, I just have a lot of leftover Yu-Gi-Oh bulk from when I was like picking up collections for a little while. I don't really like messing with Yu-Gi-Oh anymore, but every once in a while I will buy all Facebook Marketplace if it's like a really cheap price for a lot of cards or something. Um, so for this, uh, just it's just a bulk thing I was selling. Uh, pretty decent money actually. I ended up shipping these using the um, the, flat, the padded flat rate envelope, so I just kind of took stacks of cards, put them in bubble wrap, and then put them inside the bubble mailer. It ended up being about probably about six pounds, so it's a good thing it fit in there. And you know, I honestly don't even remember, remember how I got this knife. Uh, I'm pretty, I had to, I'm pretty sure it was given to me because, you know, it, 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 one of the blades was broken, so I wouldn't have bought a knife with a broken blade. I just know I wouldn't have done that, so. This had to be like either given to me or just included inside of a big assortment of stuff. Because sometimes I do buy like a box full of stuff at a time or whatever. Um, so I ended up making $12 plus free shipping. You know, pocket knives weigh nothing. So this was very easy to ship, very cheap to ship. So decent sale. Okay, so this next item was a uh, Monopoly money from the Monopoly Millionaire Edition. Now, I think I originally had this for like 5 bucks or something. But I took a best offer for 2 bucks, And um... Yeah, definitely not a very much of a sell at all, but once you add this with the leftover shipping, because I don't think it was quite five bucks to ship, so once you add that together, I think I, this actually paid for the whole Monopoly game, because I paid for two dollars for that game lot, for that game, so the other parts that I parted out will make it over, so yeah, in the end, not that bad. So I was going through a thrift store, thrift store one day, and it, it, it was on Wednesday, and Wednesday this thrift store has a five dollar fill box where you, they give you a big banana box and you can put anything you want that costs like three dollars or less and you can just you pay five dollars for everything in the box as long as it can fit so uh, these were just I think these were like end up being yeah these were just like thrown in the box uh, I, I just picked these up because it was, it was all the same series they were nice looking good condition hardcover books 
well, not hardcover, but they were really good condition looking books in the same series. I just picked them up and it was a decent. Next up, uh, was that was that so this is part from a, a bought a lot that I bought a wholesale like resale lot that I bought from a this website called KD Store or something like that. They specialize in media like uh, movies and games and music, like disc based stuff. And they do these things where like they'll sell like a hundred games for so much, you know, a hundred whatever. So this was like from a one hundred uh one hundred games disc with like uh, assortment, but all the discs were uh kick, you know disc only, like no original cases or anything. And a lot of them were kind of scratched up. So it was very much like I think you paid fifteen dollars for everything. So I have sold multiple listings from this from that lot. So it was worth it, but. I probably wouldn't do it again. It was just very, very slow sellers. Also, if you have a, a resurfacer, like a really good resurfacer, buying this kind of stuff would probably would be less of a hassle because you, you know you could resurface it. But that's a lot of time spent. So I think bottom line is doing these kind of sales are just it's a lot of work and a lot of like organizing, re, you know, making new lots, a lot of resurfacing just for not that much profit in the end. I really feel like so this was a decent little buy. Um, I think I paid 25 cents for this at a garage sale. It was a lot dirtier than I thought it was going to be, but I ended up selling it. Paid so I think paid 25 cents, sold it for 10 dollars with free shipping. But it's a hat, so it always it always shipped for like maybe two or three bucks in a little box. So yeah, um, and it was a not the quickest seller. I've had good success with Minecraft stuff. Like I think I've sold like four different Minecraft like merchandise kind of items and. They usually do decent enough, uh, so I usually look out for stuff that has the Minecraft logo and stuff on it. Okay, so I've had these goddamn witches' noses for like so long. I bought these. You actually on one, one of my older videos, you'll see when I first bought these. I did a, I did a thrift store uh, video picking with my pickups, and I picked these up, and so it was a big old bag full of these individually uh, wrapped uh, witches' noses, like uh, little gag noses. I mean, was, this was originally from a uh, like a like a gift gag store that we have in, that we used to have in town. It was a self-owned business, but it went out of business like forever ago. Like it's been out of business since I was a little kid. And so I was in the first store, and I happened to find this bag, and it still all the individual packages had the original price tag from the store's name on it. And I'm just like, what? Like where has this been for 15 years? Is it in the attic somewhere or in a storage building? And it was the bag was real dusty and old looking and all the individual bags were like old and dusty looking so I had to take them out of the bags and I ended up separating them into lots of 10. I think there's about, I think I was able to get about 6 lots of 10 out of these so I think there's about 60, 50 noses in there all together. But anyway I separated them lots of 10 and this is the first one that sold. Um, so I think I paid like 2 bucks for the whole bag so just this one listing has made up for that. Okay, and our last listing we have for this video is a assortment of random uh, VHS, VHS tapes pre-recorded. Uh, again, this is just some tapes that I've gotten over over my last few hauls. That uh, you know, a lot of times when I go to thrift stores, I pick up the blank tapes, or like when I'm at garage sales, and I try. I usually keep them separated, and I just wait till I get enough of them to do a lot. So this was basically the last lot of uh, like tapes I had. So. These sold pretty damn quick actually. I think I listed these just yesterday and they sold today. So, ten bucks plus five dollars shipping. So not bad. All right, thank you guys for watching and see you guys later.